tell me about Atopia. What are you going to do there? <laughs> well, the, yeah, I'm on part time now, and I start full time in August. Uh, Pascal Mader is a really great guy. He's a Montreal producer who produced things like Jimmy Works, Spit. He's always been a very brave producer in that he likes to take auteur films that, may, you know, whole knowledge might not have a very big audience, but if he believes in just the pure raw expression of the filmmaker's voices behind it, he'll give it a real a shot. You know, which not enough Canadian producers are willing to do. So he's a very gutsy guy. And what he wants to do is start off a new, well, he's already begun now, um, a new North America wide acquisitions and distribution division of Atopia. So he's hired me to come on to run that side. Uh, which is kind of weird for me because I don't, I mean, I've always been involved with the industry in, in ways, but always in peripheral ways. I've been an exhibitor for many years. I've programmed a repertory theater, uh, Cinema Park, for six years. But on the other side of things, I mean, I've never, you know, it's been 10 years since I took an office job, to give you an idea. So, it's, you know, I do a lot of freelance jobs, but anyways, um, so it's, it's kind of shocking. Uh, acquisition and distribution business manager. Oh, sorry. Uh, acquisition Distribution Manager, that's that's officially what it's listed what as. What content are you looking for? Everything, well, I shouldn't say everything interesting. We're looking for edgy documentaries, we're looking for Euro films, Euro or Asian films that haven't gotten distributed here, that are now a couple of years old and have, have almost been forgotten about. Because often you'll have these films that are really big deals on the festival circuit and they're great movies. And at the beginning when companies come up and make an offer, the sales agent is seeing like dollar signs thinking, well, it played in Sundance, it played in Venice. And the reality is those films open commercially later on and like almost nobody goes. It's very, very hard to get an audience. I mean, what we're looking at is some of the films that maybe a year ago would have been unobtainable because their prices would have been so high uh, and now they're, they're probably more within the realms where we can negotiate because uh, the thing is, of course, we, we're willing to spend a fair amount of money to acquire a title. We can't afford to spend an, a, a, an amount of money that's guaranteed to bring us to bankruptcy. You know, a lot of the really interesting smaller films, you know they're for a very limited audience and that's totally cool. But to be, if you're going to have enough money to actually produce a proper release and pay for advertising, because two-thirds of the battle is making people aware of what the movie is, of course. Uh, and, you know, that's the thing. You have to have money to do a proper, responsible release of the film. The idea is that, well, it, there's two different streams. I mean, for theatrical, there's the independent, the truly independent art theaters that aren't part of the chain that are run by individual film fans, the equivalent of a cinematic park in Montreal. There's many theaters like that. There's Facets. Uh, there's the Pioneer in New York City. Uh, there, there's just tons of these theaters. There's the Alamo Draft House in Texas. And thankfully, yeah, there's those theaters that are likely for any of the edgy documentaries or experimental films we pick up. They would be great venues for that. And then the more potentially accessible films uh, could go to even, you never know, to the Landmark Theaters chain or AMC. Really, you never know until... What's you know. the second stream? Well, the second stream is the bigger, the oh. bigger cinema chains like AMC or Landmark, right. where you're not going independent, where you're not going to like the individual booker, and you're going to the booker for a whole region instead. Uh, you know, obviously, other films, sadly nowadays, would probably be direct to video because there's just to get a theater manager right now, the business is down for art house theaters. It's down about 18 to 19 percent. It's like a low that art theaters haven't seen in years. So to get an, a, a manager now, a booker, to take a risk on a film that doesn't have stars, that you know maybe it was a very big deal and celebrated in its country of origin, but doesn't have a very, doesn't have a, a huge machine behind it to be saturation campaigns for television and theaters. Um, to get a, a manager to take a chance on it's getting harder and harder. So in some cases, I'm sorry? In, in this context, in this, do, you have, do you have a DVD strategy? Yes. Well, that's the thing. In that context, what we would do is it would be direct to video and cable, but we would still do one-off specialty screenings, like one special night in New York, one special night in Toronto, um, just to guarantee that, you know, if you do one or two theatricals in each major city, at least it gives the film visibility. It identifies it as a real movie because the last thing you want to do is take a great film and just pitch it to direct video oblivion. We wouldn't do that to begin with. I mean, we'd package the film with review quotes and morales. We'd make it clear the film you know, has been seen and endorsed and it's an interesting film. But the worst is when a film doesn't even hit theatrical for a day and doesn't get reviewed and just shows up on video one day out of the blue with two million other things and it's like a meat grinder then. And uh, some of our favorite films have gotten shafted that way. So everybody at Utopia feels strongly to protect the movie's identity, to make sure the film comes out in a way that's um, not only, not only uh, approved by the filmmaker, but the filmmaker will be actively involved with almost every stage of getting the film released uh, for video, theatrical, and everything else. Was it uh, Pascal who approached you? What happened? Yeah. 
It was Pascal who approached me. It was actually a very funny story because um, there's a film from a filmmaker that I, I've been a fan of for many years, François Miron, a local director, who has a 20 plus year career now of making experimental films. And he's won awards everywhere. He's had retrospectives held in every major country. Uh, he's never gotten a feature film off the ground until very recently when Pascal gave him the support that he wasn't able to get anywhere else. So he made this experimental 35 millimeter feature by the name of The Fourth Life. And uh, I wanted to play it at Fantasia. Initially, I was talking to François Miron about playing it at Fantasia. And then within a week of my talking to François, I ran to Pascal at the Rendezvous de Cinema Québécois, and Pascal asked me if I could come in for a meeting. And I'd assumed it was to discuss showing the fourth life of Fantasia. And instead, it was a pitch to, to join his company and, and you know, head off this new division, which paralyzed me. I was mortified because... First of all, I've known Pascal for a long, long time, and I really I have huge admiration for what he does. Um, the last thing I want to do is come in unprepared and potentially damage the company, because I, you know I, I really want to act responsibly here, and I don't have a back. I have a big background in so many other peripheral ways for this, but I've never done this job before. You know what I mean? I'm confident that I can do it, but it's still I never expected that to be thrown at me. It was like, oh, you know, I immediately I realized I'd have to drop a lot of the writing commitments that I've got if I were to take it on. Uh, Pascal, thankfully, has been a long-term fan of Fantasia, so there was never any question of whether I still have the time to do Fantasia or not while you know, doing the Atopia job. So he's allowing me to go back and forth. Like eventually I might have to have a Blackberry surgically embedded into my arm, you know, uh, once we have a real release slate coming up. But he's absolutely cool with me dedicating time to Fantasia every year. Um, it's, it's really shocking and encouraging, you know, and he's, he's one of the few Montreal producers that I, I would be comfortable working with, which is the other nice bonus, you know, I mean, so...